Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Jason Shepard. I'm the VP of Ecosystem at uh, Zadita and also an LF Edge board member. And today we're going to talk about LF Edge, you know, as an overall umbrella project within Linux Foundation, but then also, um, you know, where we're headed, some of the key uh, elements of the, the overall project, what, what the sub projects are, you know, some of the verticals that we're going after and the like. Um, you know, and, and with me uh, are uh, my esteemed panelists. Um, starting with Malini, um, you know, with VMware, maybe you do a quick introduction and, and we'll go through the, the panel and then kind of get right into it. Uh, so hi everyone, I'm Malini Bandararu and I work for VMware. I lead the open source IoT Edge efforts and I've been involved with EdgeX Foundry for over two years. So that's how I also know Jason. <laughs> and with that, I hand off. Uh, yeah, Vikram. Hi, I'm Vikram. I'm a product manager uh, at MobileJX. I deal with infrastructure uh, developments there. I also chair the Linux, uh, Linux Foundation Edge architecture group. And uh, Daniel. Hi, everyone. My name is Daniel Lazaro. I'm a senior technical program manager at the CTO office with OSI Self, and I lead the um, uh, open source program. And I'm also a board member at LFH. All right. Cool. And then Tom. Hey everybody, um, Tom Nadeau. I'm a director at Red Hat, uh, where I lead um, networking and uh, telco partner engineering. And we, we do a lot of work on uh, Linux Foundation, Edge, and networking projects, including Ukraine. Great. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, obviously, we've been working together for a while in, in LF Edge, and um, you know, so for uh, uh, the audience, so if you haven't heard of LF Edge, you know, it's an umbrella organization within the Linux Foundation, very similar to how Cloud Native Compute Foundation um, runs, also LF Networking, uh, where it's a, a collection of complementary projects that that we bring in together as a broader community. You know, the projects run independently, but the goal is to start to harmonize across the different projects over time. And um, you know, each one serves uh, you know a different area in the stack. And and while on the surface there may seem like some overlap, there's also the, the whole point is to be welcoming as a community and then kind of work through uh, you know any any potential overlap over time. And and then also recognize that there's just different choices out there in, in the market. So um, you know, that's just how the how open source works. Um, but you know, think of LF Edge you know as a collection of projects that help um, developers uh, fast track. Um, projects for, you know, IoT and Edge solutions. So it's not, not just about IoT, you know, it's a common misnomer. You know, Edge is such a broad uh, topic. Um, we'll talk about that you know, throughout uh, this session, but, but also, um, you know, how do, I, how do I simplify development, you know, stop inventing the middle over and over again? We're seeing a lot of that happening right now, a reinvention of, of the same things, um, you know, that shared technology investment through open source is so important. Um, how do I drive more interoperability across different components, um, you know, through an open model. Um, you know, how do I decouple my data from any given back end, any given cloud? So I'm in control of my data. Uh, you know, that's another key uh, element. You know, having a multi-cloud strategy that starts with an open edge, you know, I think we all think is is very important. So a lot of different elements to it. Um, but then, you know, as I mentioned, edge is a, a nebulous term. Um, so I guess the, the first thing, you know, that well, one thing we did recently uh, was create a a taxonomy for LF Edge and the old Sanders joke is how do you solve the Sanders problem is create one more standard. Um, so the uh, uh, taxonomy, how do we solve the taxonomy problem? We're going to create one more taxonomy that we've been getting a lot of good traction with it because of uh, the way we approached it. But uh, Vikram had led that effort. Maybe Vikram, you could tell us a little bit about um, the taxonomy and just some of the stuff that you've been doing within LF Edge. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, so this came about that uh, we saw so many over, uh, overloaded terms in the market, and there are so many verticals, as Jason was pointing to. But we saw a common pattern of continuum. We saw there is maturity in the cloud native technologies. Can we take these and extend it to edge uh, workloads? Um, and then we started looking at these problems in, in ways that could, um, that could solve real problems. So we divided these um, different um, edge boundaries into four distinct boundaries. Then we talked about what would be the, the best ways to look at how uh, enterprise edge would come about, what we call as user edge in there. How do these edge boundaries sometimes bleed into telco's edge? Um, what are the architecture trends for a service provider edge? How can they capitalize on this uh, trend where they can actually migrate workloads from enterprise to their own network? Um, we suggested a few application deployment models there. We also talked about some of the patterns we see. Um, and in this continuum, we also used some of the mature cloud native technologies, which you can extend in these boundaries. 
Um, we also talked about a bunch of these workloads, which have active projects in the Linux Foundation Edge are actively working on to solve some of these key challenges. Um, but what we want to see and do in the next version is what we are looking for a feedback from you guys to understand what would you like to hear more. Uh, we made a first attempt um, to make it easier for people to understand, uh, not complicated with 5G standards or 3GPP or whatever telcos are talking about, but make it easier for people to understand how they can benefit from this newer trend, um, which is coming their way. Um, now, with, there are multiple ways you can actually give us feedback. You can join uh, different Slack channels or tools we LF Edge has. One good source to understand our paper is uh, we have a video uploaded for our webinar on the LFA channel. It's titled as Demystifying Edge. You should take a look at it. The resource, the white paper itself is available in the resources column on the lfh.org. But you can reach us through lfh.org the best way which we think you can contribute is by joining our tech architecture working group. So once you reach out to our social uh, channels, you will be redirected to the tech architecture working group if you are interested and work with us to define the new things. One of the things which we are excited about is now that we have laid out a structure for the technology underneath and how this continuum can work. What can we do with the real applications and try to understand their needs and try to talk about the real application workloads which can come alive. So this is, has been our thoughts. We would look forward to your fact, feedback in near future. Yeah. Back to you, Jason. Eleni, you had, you had a um, next section, yeah. Uh, Vikram, Good. you mentioned you broke it up into like four kinds of edge type of things. Could you comment about the typical size or the kind of hardware you have at these four types of edges? Like, is it one node? Is it 10, 100? Something along those lines to help the audience? Yeah, great question. So it, it what we saw is, um, we understand the cloud edge, right? This is like a massive data centers. And then there is service provider edge again, same side, of, so same similar structure, but maybe a little bit less compute. The elasticity in the cloud is probably not there. But then user edge is also very involved. I mean, if you look at IoT workloads, there could be just edge gateways. There could be some things that are actual enterprises running their IML workloads, which might be actually a mini data center. Um, so different hardware, different footprint. So we dissected these boundaries in terms of various um, uh, angles. One was how the footprint looks like. One is like how much cloud native can we go inside? How can we reuse some of the technologies? So if you look at it, that's how we dissected it. But we haven't made hard boundaries around these um, these four things we call as edge. What we often see is, let's say 5G can offer private LDs and there's a bleeding in across these boundaries. So we're not making something really hard and fixed but we want to make it easier for people to understand that these things can work together, right? And then there is, um, there is a continuum existing across them. So defining these terms clearly, expressing them, I think is what the idea was for the paper. Yeah, we've been getting, a, I think, a lot of good traction you know, across the analyst community and just with folks in general, because it's, it's rather than a lot of edge definitions, the, the taxonomies we've seen use very nebulous terms like thin and thick, near and far. I, near and far, I joke, it's like Sesame Street when Grover's like near and far. Like, and, and I mean, it's, 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 it's a commonly you know, well-known thing in, in the telco world, but it, it means different things to different people. And so um, uh, even the, 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 the word real time is very subjective, very different if it's latency critical versus latency sensitive. You know, no, one, no one's gonna you know, die if your Netflix shuts off. Uh, you know, might be inconvenient, but 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 very very different. Um, so latency critical workloads versus latency sensitive. That's one of the considerations that we talk about in the taxonomy. Is it in a physically secure space like a data center, a micromodular data center, whatever, or is it not? You know, distributed out in the wild, you have to do different things. Is it so constrained? I mean, to Vikram's point, that you can't you know, do various different hardware abstractions. You can't run virtual machines or containers. Those are the types of considerations that we used to break up the continuum, but then also, as, as Vikram said, there's not like hard and fast rules, you know, across the lines. It, it just, you know, I think the way we came about it as a community helps to create more definitive, you know, absolute technical trade-offs to think about the continuum versus the, the, the fuzzy language. Uh, well, that's also, what Jason, don't forget, there. like one of the, one of the important things we did was to define what edge is or what it's not. Yeah, yeah there's that, yeah. <laughs> right, I mean, it's a, it was a sort of like cloud, you know, a couple of years ago, it's, it's everything. And that really helped break it down too, which is, you know, there are different kinds of edge and that's okay. And like we said, uh, we were talking earlier, you know, one of the things too, that it's, it should be obvious that there's, there's a bunch of common components 
that can be reused in just really different form factors, um, as they call them, or, um, you know, the same thing, just slightly reused or, or slightly used in a slightly different use case, but reused. So we're not reinventing uh, whatever component, I mean, pick anything. I mean, cause we saw this as, as the project sort of started to grow in this, in this, in the LF edge area. And that was one of the debates we had early on, right? Which was how many of these do we need? And what we realized is that these aren't the same, these, they were actually different and they were different enough. Like what Vikram was saying that they actually make sense to stay, you know, to keep around and care and feed because they're addressing a, a, actually a different kind of use case. Well, that sounds like an excellent segue into talking more about Acrano as one of the anchor, <laughs> <laughs> anchor projects for LFA. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so and it, it, talk a little bit more about what the, the, the goal of the Acrano project is. Yeah. So originally, um, yeah, that's a good segue. Um, <laughs> and by the way, uh, Vikram, I was going to say, if people need more, uh, uh, want to give more feedback about the paper, you should give them your phone number and they could just uh, get this. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we'll put it up in chat. Put it up in the chat. Um, yeah, the the Acrano project itself started off really as the the kernel of the LF Edge. It became the LF Edge, right? And uh, when we started the project, you know, look, we didn't really know what we were doing in terms of Edge, right? As I was saying, Edge was all of this stuff which was not core, effectively, right? And it was like your uh, Sesame Street analogy: it's either near or far, but. Um, we really needed to get down to the details and break it down. And that's, so Acrano actually started, if you look at the blueprints uh, uh, pattern or blueprints were the way that we tried to break that down and define the patterns, right? And the, the contextual situation or the use cases that mattered. And if you look now, I mean, that's how the project actually does releases. They're basically done around a blueprint. Each blueprint gets a release, it's life cycle managed. Um, and you'll notice that there are components that are recycled within blueprints, you know, thankfully, because we're not, you know, we don't have two things. We, we've created more like one and a half things and we've addressed two use cases, bingo, you know? And so you can see, um, you know, the, the current state of the art. And, and in fact, it's, it's instructional to look through the page that has the blueprints on it. You could see this evolution I'm talking about where we started off with, um, I'm going to bring this up here, which is SDN enable broadband access. Yeah, that's, that's neat, but that's actually, there's a bunch of subcases in there. Right? And, um, and you can see like, if you go to where we are today, um, we've narrowed this down pretty, pretty narrowly. I mean, there's like a micro mech use case, for example, which took mech, which is a, a pretty narrow area anyway. I mean, if you slice off mech in the edge bucket, um, but now we have micro mech. So you can see, for example, some folks realized there's some special tuning you need to do to actually use this use case. Um, and that's really what we're after. And that's been real, real goodness in this project. Um, and it lets people focus on, um, I think like you said this, uh, Jason earlier, like let's stop reinventing the middle and focus on the out stuff on the outside, just to evoke the edge word again. <laughs> let's focus around the edges, not the, not the middle. Yeah. And then the project is is kind of bouncing between uh, both a horizontal focus and a, a vertical focus, right? Yeah, and so that's, you know, the, the horizontal focus is really the breadth of use cases, so to speak. And the horizontal focus or the vertical focus is more like which platform or platforms can be recycled. Um, and I think, Milani, you were talking about this earlier um, and Daniel about, you know, recycling components from existing platforms, um, commercial and open source, um, to address the use case. And again, the, the blueprint tries to define the use case and the implement and an implementation, um, or the components you can use in your implementation. And that's a, that's a departure from other projects that we've, or other ways we've, we've approached, uh, this ad in the past, like, uh, I mentioned OPNIV or own app in the past open daylight, these projects really focused on either a singular thing or too many things. And they just, it wasn't, they didn't have a good way of organizing how the project worked. And I think these are really, uh, you know, back to the blueprint thing. They're also a great way to organize the project. 
um, and, and a good way for other people to show up and realize where they can contribute immediately um, yeah. as a developer angle. That makes sense. Lonnie, uh, Lonnie, oh man, I'm so, I've got it's like a okay. mental hey, thing now. Hey, Jason, don't worry about hey, it. Hey, you. I'll, I'll just start <laughs> calling you, hey, you. Um, uh, anyway, so, so yes, yeah, so I guess tell us more about um, uh, you know, no, your work no. in Alpha. Before that, oh, you had a question. Yeah, uh, Tom, yeah. you know, you mentioned vertical and horizontal and using technologies, you know, across blueprints at the horizontal layer, something like maybe Kubernetes or OpenStack or... Mm -hmm. you know, open daylight. Is there anything happening in that space where these edge use cases are giving feedback to those other projects to maybe extend them or redefine them or maybe prune them? Like, like Kubernetes is large and is typically used in data centers. Mm -hmm. Is LF Edge maybe giving them feedback to maybe trim something or do something a little differently or provide yeah. another capability for edge use cases? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Um, again, in the don't reinvent things that exist uh, department, you know, the Acrano, there are examples of that that we've done already. Uh, early on uh, in the early blueprints, they were stack related. Uh, and those, uh, there were a bunch of additions and enhancements that had to happen to stack that were pushed back uh, into the actual open stack project. Um, and even other projects, which I, I can't remember exactly, but um, my team was doing a fast and furious work on that early on. And um, we were pushing there and now most recently into Kubernetes. Um, and, and we say Kubernetes, but there's like 500 components in Kubernetes right now. Um, but, you know, and that's really part of the challenge too, is like finding the component, because there probably is one that exists and then modifying it rather than building a new one. Um, and, and it's important to modify it too, by the way, I should mention, this is one of the mistakes we made in OPNV, which was we tried to own the component or make a copy of it and then modify it or whatever. And it was effectively a fork of the mainline project, which then became a real bunch of fun, uh, merging all that stuff back. So I think, you know, examples of that are, um, uh, uh, I, I, I raised this earlier, like the Kubernetes data store is a good example. There was some debate early on about in, in uh, one of the blueprints we were looking at about building their own data store. We said, well, no, let's not do that. <laughs> There's one that comes for free. That's pretty good. Let's use that one. Um, and, and there, there's a, a variety of these examples. Um, and there, and it's good that there are a lot of them, uh, it's, it's, it, it means we're recycling. Um. So, Melanie, uh, I guess, you know, tell us a bit more about um, your work in EdgeX. I mean, obviously, near and dear to my heart, having worked on it since the beginning, and we've worked on it together, of course. And one of these days, I'll learn how to pronounce your name. But uh, um, either way, um, yeah, tell us about uh, your experience in EdgeX and some of the similar principles that Tom was talking about in terms of not reinventing the wheel. So one of the things I totally like about EdgeX is, is this, I focus on the edge. Uh, let me just get this piece right. Let me not worry about orchestration. Let me not worry about management. Let me not worry about anything else. So that's its strength. And because that's its main focus, you can leverage it in other systems and deploy it. And its focus being the edge, it says, how do I connect to southbound devices, whether they're sensors or actuators? Do I support enough connectivity protocols, be it Bluetooth or MQTT or HTTP? So that's one of its strengths that it focuses on that connectivity. And then another piece is it has a rules engine in there so you can do some data processing at that edge. So your latency to respond to, you know, important critical things, you know, as Jason mentioned earlier, is it latency sensitive or latency critical? You can address those sort of use cases. Further, is there some kind of analytics you want to do at the edge? You know, let's say it's a car edge or it's an EV charging type of edge. How often do these vehicles come? How long do they stay? That sort of processing you can leave at the edge instead of having to pump all that data up to a cloud using a lot of network bandwidth to build those kind of analytical models of these different endpoints. And another very nice thing about EdgeX Foundry, apart from the rules engine and the connectivity is, it says, I can export anything you want in any format you want. So it has uh, an app function SDK that allows you to customize these different outputs that you want to expose. Thank you. 
Cool. And, you know, and so then you know, we get questions all the time. So, uh, you know, again, as a project, we're, we're looking to see how we can convert things over time, but also recognize where there's, there's you, uh, inherent uh, different approaches that you need to take. And uh, we get asked all the time is, you know, with Fledge and EdgeX, what's the difference? And, um, you know, I look at it, I mean, uh, you know, I helped get EdgeX started. So obviously, you know, I, I, uh, you know, been deeply involved there, but at the same time, I see there's a lot of value in, in the way the, the fledge community is approaching things. And, um, you know, I think based on the fact that there's a continuum, there's different choices that people have to make. Um, would love to see, you know, convergence on some of the connectors over time and things like that, but but but, but that's part of the whole you know, value of, of, of a community uh, working together and figuring out what makes sense. But you know, Daniel, can you, you tell us a little bit about, you know, how Fledge is approaching things and, you know, your experience working with the, that community from OSI? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Fledge is uh, specializing in, uh, in the continuum described in, uh, in the paper as a lower footprint than uh, other frameworks, but it also is positioning itself in the industrial vertical, acknowledging the differences between operations or critical operations versus the rest of the world. And um, uh, there is a lot of data to be collected. Uh, you know, there's every company right now is going under digital transformation. COVID is fast forwarding that. And companies have realized that they need to automate and collect a lot more data than they were collecting before. And operations has all of these um, um, kind of type processes. And Fletch is trying to help, you know, collect all these diverse data from all these, these diverse protocols, tiny sensors, and combine it to operational data. And, you know, provide this sort of Swiss, Swiss Army knife, you know, for the edge, the operations edge. Um, help fast track development for tiny, you know, sensors again, different protocols and, and, and basically standardize and curate that data and integrate uh, with cloud and other historians and, and uh, products that are used in, in those markets or those verticals. Yeah, and I, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I mean, the closer you get to the physical world, the more, um, constrained everything gets, the more uh, custom the form factors get, the more uh, diversity there is and whatnot. And that's where I think, why I think we, you're seeing a number of projects. I mean, obviously we have, um, you know, SDO in terms of the new project within the community, secure device onboarding. Um, uh, we've, we've got Open Horizon and we've also got Betel. We've got other projects and, and everyone's kind of approaching things in a, um, in a little bit of a different way, but we're also, you know, seeking to go you know, find that convergence over time. But um, you know, Eve, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about, you know, Eve. So, so as Zadita, we had contributed Eve, um, uh, uh, you know, as a, one of the, 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 the founding projects and, you know, think of Eve as, is focused on creating a universal abstraction layer for stuff that's outside of the data center. So, you know, a lot of great tools you know, for, for server class infrastructure in, in data centers, um, you know, tend to be physically secure, uh, got a really good connection between a controller and that data center. And, um, you know, Eve is, is a bare metal compute foundation, of course, completely open, open source, uh, vendor neutral APIs that enables you to abstract virtual machines and containers, uh, whatever workloads you want from that underlying hardware, which as you get into the data, out of the data center world, out into the wild, it's, it's super diverse between x86 and ARM hardware. Um, you need to have a very strong zero trust security model because people can you know, access that hardware often. You might not really know that you're on a, a network behind a network firewall. You don't even know what the network is. So that's been the focus of Eve. So think of, you know, in the paper, we define the smart device edge as, as basically any device that's outside of a data center, but still capable of running apps. And it's the lower limits about 256 megs of memory. And then below that you go super constrained. Um, embedded software, uh, more custom over the air tools because that because of those constraints. Uh, the smart device edge includes, as we defined it in the taxonomy, mobile devices, you know, clients, PCs. Those are solved problems with iOS and Android, and Windows uh, ecosystem, etc. When you get into the IoT sense of the world, it's it's like wild west. And and so Eve is you know think of Eve as like doing for IoT workloads at the smart device edge what um, Android did for mobile, the same component you know at that edge. And so. Uh, you know, and, and, and an EdgeX or a Fledge would ride on top. Um, we're actually building, starting to build some blueprints in, in, in a crano of how do you use those frameworks with, with an Eve and start to kind of create some of those 
um, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, the blueprints across the continuum make it make it simplified. But um, so so that's kind of where we're, where we're approaching it from an Eve standpoint. But then, of course, the, the collection of projects, I mean, where do we see things, you know, headed, in, you know, longer term? You know, I mean, we're, we're seeking paper on the or feedback on the paper. Um, you know, we're, we're increasingly trying to get more feedback from end users within the community. We're starting to kind of spin up that event. But, um, you know, Vikram, any, any comments on kind of where we're, where we're headed? Yeah, I mean, the, the world is exciting now, right? With uh, At least we started talking with each other and then we are working across the groups. So there are a few thoughts we have in mind. We can pursue things what people really want to uh, get out of us. Is there a real application workload need, whether you want to run it on, let's say it's an IoT workload on premise or whether you want to run it on network edge, uh, what would be what would you like to see uh, from us? Um, is there some specific APIs you're looking for? What verticals you want us to address more? What do you think uh, maybe makes sense uh, in, in terms of business? So um, there are a wide variety of things we are looking at. There are actually a lot of use cases. Um, we understand the workloads. Now we want to get in a little bit deeper and that's the feedback we really want to see from the market, from the actual users. What would you like to hear from us more? Um, yeah, that's that's the idea, Jason. Yeah. So Daniel, any, any um, last thoughts as we kind of wrap up? It's always hard to find the the, the mute button. Yeah, so I, 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 I sorry, my window often goes. disappears on. on, 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 and, on <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I just wanted to mention that uh, one of the things that I I think is very important that is happening at the uh, LFH group is um, the interoperation and interoperability between the projects. So. Um, Flex has been working with Eve and as well as. Um, uh, Agrino on a blueprint, but it's, there's some work ongoing to kind of interoperate and connect between EdgeX and Fletch, as well as integrate with us with uh, Open Horizon. So I think also combining the, the power of these frameworks, acknowledging heterogeneity and the advantages of that, and basically uh, promoting that interoperability, I think is key moving forward. Yeah, yeah it definitely makes sense. So, uh, uh, Malini, like final final thoughts? Um, I echo what Daniel's saying. We're seeing EdgeX working with E. We're seeing EdgeX working with Open Horizon for the management aspect, monitoring and management. And I think that was the vision of LF Edge, to bring all these projects together, have them talk and work together so we have that common framework available for real use cases. Yeah, cool. And yeah, I mean, even as Daniel mentioned, you know, Fudge and EdgeX communities are talking about how can there be a bridge and and whatnot. Um, and then Tom, like a couple, I've got a, probably about a minute left. Any final thoughts? Yeah, just to add to the integration aspect, um, I'd, I'd like to see more um, encouragement of operators. Um, and I, I don't mean necessarily telco operators, but I think we're talking about, uh, you know, Daniel was talking about industrial edge, IoT edge. Um, we need to make sure we have the people here working on at least contributing to the blueprints that are going to use this stuff. Um, operations is the, the gift that keeps on giving and um, making that as good and cheap and inexpensive as possible is, is really a big deal. So I'd, that's kind of one thing I'd like to see is, is us work harder getting um, operators uh, to, the, to the table. Yeah, I mean, I think it's key. Just you know, these days, if if as a business, if you don't have some comprehension of open source software in your business model, I think it's very difficult to to excel because you know you're just trying to reinvent everything. You're you're spending a lot of time. Is what I I would I've heard this term a while back, and I I love it. It's open source is to avoid undifferentiated heavy lifting. <laughs> and there's a lot of undifferentiated heavy lifting happening out there. And then, so yeah, so I mean, to, in closing, uh, you know, really welcome people to get involved, you know, go to the LF Edge site, you know, learn about any of the projects, learn about the overall umbrella. Uh, always the best way to impart change in open source is to, to vote with your keyboard, you know, write code, you know, help on the next white paper by contributing, you know, thoughts there. Um, so with that, you know, we might have time for, you know, a question or two. I know we're kind of pushing the, the overall time, but, um, you know, Thank you for for listening. Uh, you can find us in the, out in the community, and and um, uh, you know, have a good one. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, thanks.
Hello, everyone. We're right at time, and we will probably not have time for the live Q&A, but please continue the conversation on the Slack channel that was broadcast out. Uh, it is Slack channel number two, If Edge Project Discussions. Once again, that Slack channel is number two, If Edge Project Discussions. And thank you for attending today. Have a good day.